Okay, um, so this top part of your table asks you to go from standard form to factor form to the zeros. This is kind of what we're used to. It's what we've been practicing a lot lately. And some of them are really straightforward. For example, when we see the x squared um, plus 125, we see it's a sum of two cubes. We've just practiced that. Okay, but there are some that don't quite factor. So I'm going to show you a couple tricks here um, using these two examples. So I have a polynomial in standard form. Factoring by grouping is not going to work for me because I have five different terms. So what I'm going to go to is I'm going to go to the graph um, and see if I can find some of the roots from the graph and so go from my standard form to my roots and then try to build in that factored form. So I put that polynomial into Desmos, so you can see that here, and I can see from Desmos I have two zeros, negative one and four. So if I have zeros of negative one, oh, I forgot when I do this, um, I have to close out Notability and go back in. <laughs> Uh, technology. Okay, so we had those two zeros, negative 1 and 4. And so zeros, negative 1, and then 4. So I know that I'm going to have an x plus 1 and an x minus 4 in my factored form. But I don't know what else is going to be in my factored form. So what I can do is I can factor or divide these out of the polynomial and then I'll be able to see what's left. So I'm going to take them one at a time and to divide quickly because there's no leading coefficient in front of the x, I'm just going to use synthetic division. So I'm going to start with, my, with this first one here, x plus 1. So I'll write down the opposite of 1 here. And now my coefficients from my um, polynomial. So 1, negative 3, 5, negative 27, negative 36. I'll bring down the 1 to begin. And now multiply and add. So negative 1, add these together, negative 4. Positive 4, add those together, 9. Negative 9, Add these together, um, that would be a negative 36. Multiply those, get a positive 36. Add those, get zero. So we also just validated too that x plus one is a factor. Okay, so let's write out this polynomial. Um, it would be a third degree, so x cubed minus four x squared plus 9x minus 36. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide that by the x minus 4 because I also know that's a factor. So I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to use synthetic division again because it's fastest. I'm going to write down that opposite negative 4 in my box and now my coefficients of my cubic. So 1, negative 4, 9, negative 36. Bring down the 1 and start. Um, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. Remainder 0. What I have left is um, a quadratic, so it'd be an x squared plus 0x, I don't have to write that, plus 9. So I can now add this, oops, <laughs> this binomial of x squared plus 9, I can put that next to my x plus 1, x minus 4, x squared plus 9. So now I've got my fully factored form. So this is my factored form, standard form to factored form. I have two of my zeros that I found. Now I need to find the zeros for this last parenthesis. So I put x squared plus 9 equal to 0 and solve. 
subtract 9 from both sides. x squared equals negative 9. Take the square root of both sides. x equals plus or minus 3i. So 3i plus positive 3i and negative 3i are two other zeros. You can have imaginary zeros. We will include those on our chart per the directions. Say include imaginary or complex solutions and multiplicities. Speaking of multiplicities, I have one more example for us. This one's very similar. It says find all the roots. We've got our standard form. Um, if I go ahead and try to group this, the problem I'm going to encounter is I'm not going to have matching parentheses because 294 divided by 35 is not 8. So I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to head over to Desmos and I am going to um, put this equation in there and look at some zeros and work my way backwards. Now, remember how that didn't work out well for me last time? Um, I wrote down those two zeros. Um, so I saw one at negative 6. And I saw another one at positive 7. So again, this is coming straight from Desmos. Okay, I just know that my notability is going to crash if I open that up. So those are two of my zeros, which tells me that ooh, x plus 6 and x minus 7 are going to be part of my factored form. Um, so I'm going to start by dividing this by x plus 6, again using synthetic division. So the opposite of 6 goes here. 1, negative 8, negative 35, and 294 are my coefficients. Bring down that 1. All right, 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. Add those up, negative 14. Now I'm going to grab my calculator. Um, 6 times 14. Okay, I'm going to have a positive answer because a negative times a negative is positive. So I have 84. Add these up. 84 minus 35 is 49. Multiply 6 times 49 for a negative 294. I shouldn't be surprised that my remainder is 0 because I already know that x plus 6 is a factor. Um, this is going to be a quadratic. I have x squared minus 14 plus 49. So I know that this along with the x plus 6 is um, part of my factored form. Now take a pause. We know x minus 7 is part of this. Take a look at that. Well, it multiplies to 49 and adds to 14. Negative 7 and negative 7. This is a perfect square trinomial. So to put this in factored form, I would have my x plus 6 and then my x minus 7 squared. So 7 is a 0 of this function not once, but twice. There are three zeros in this function. This is what a multiplicity is. So we call it a multiplicity because we only see it once on the graph, but we know from our factored form that it exists twice. Okay. All right, I hope that you found these a little bit helpful. Um, if you have more questions, Feel free to stop into office hours and ask those. But once that table's completed, you should be asking yourself, what patterns do you notice? And what connections can you make between the function and the zeros? That's where you need to really tune in your focus. All right, I'll see you later this week.